Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I welcome you all to this you know wonderful episode another edition of our popular program or regular series uh, this is entitled Samuel Saul and David their ministries and the kingship my name is Reverend David Sinokoko and it's my special privilege to bring us to teach us the word of God amen Paul told Timothy somewhere in the Bible he says the things Thou have heard of me, commit to faithful men who are also able to teach others. In other words, Paul was telling Timothy, what you have learned from me, do not let it you know, fall to the ground and die. But, but do what? Pass it to other people. Teach others. Throw it around. You don't know who else is going to catch, catch that ball and become a flame and then a revival will take place. And that's what I seek to do uh, by the special grace of God the things I have learned of many men of God, the things I have learned, learned by reading, the things I have learned by experience in the things of God. I want to commit to faithful men who are able to teach others also. My name is Reverend David Sinakoko. You are welcome again in Jesus' name. Uh, before we do anything, we are going to pray. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Prayer is indispensable. So let's just quickly uh, thank the Lord and invite the Holy Ghost to be with us. Father, in the name that is above every name. The Bible says, and his name, in the book of Revelation, it says, and his name is the word of God. The word of God is another name for Jesus. Amen. We thank you because we want to study the word of God. We want to study Jesus. Come and be with us. Anoint us. Edify us. Bible says in the book of Revelation that anoint my eyes with salve that I may see. Father, anoint also our ears with ointment that we may hear. Especially, Bible says, He that hath ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. In the book of Revelation, the Spirit of God is speaking, and He will speak unto us this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go any further, we are going to take an advert, a promotional video from our parent organization, the organization, this, our entity is called the International School of Ministry, Greater Houston. So at the courtesy, we are teaching you the Bible, we are bringing biblical teachings. So as a school, we run a curriculum, we run classes, and then we help believers equip them, we equip them with the word of God so that they can go out there and fulfill their ministries, fulfill their prophetic ministry, fulfill whatever, the apostolic, the evangelistic, the teacher ministry, the pastoral ministry, or whatever ministry, the Lord, ministry of helps, that, you know, working of miracles, whatever God has commissioned you to do, we try, we do our best for the seat of God to you know, enable you. So let's just take this advance. Praise the Lord. You are welcome back and I want to thank the Lord for you know having watched that about that's what that school is doing all over the world right now the, the, the school is in about 160 countries and county and there are about 40,000 training centers the International School of Ministry Greater Houston the one that's bringing you this program is a training center for the ISO and praise the Lord so this time we are teaching you from a, another holy ground amen this place is actually a church environment the parking lot of the church and i don't want to move too much but i'm going to move around in time as time permits this church is called mission bend united methodist church so it's actually a methodist church and some of us know about the denomination called the methodist john weasley started the Methodist Church. So this is one of the churches. In due course we'll be discussing several you know denominations. We'll be discussing several denominations. And uh, one of the denominations we talked about the other time was the Baptist the Baptist. So we are in a ground of the Methodist. Amen. So that's where our Bible 
message, teaching, is going to spring forth. We have a very beautiful environment. As you can see, I was actually moving around. But as we as we move around, let's just begin to introduce us to this lesson. Like I said, this is Samuel, Saul, and David. Their ministries and the kingship. Last episode, we were looking at the book of Esther. And we began to study chapter 1. Esther chapter 1. And then we read verses 1 to 9. By the time we got to verse 9, we, we, we just stopped. You know, hoping, and we are here today to begin studying from Hallelujah, verse ten. Amen. It's my special privilege to welcome us to this wonderful episode. Hallelujah. So right here behind me, you can see the church. It's called. Mission Bend United behind me, you can see over there. Over there is their sign. So that's the place. And then this place is somewhere on the road. So while we are studying, you might hear background noise of cars moving around. Please just, just take note. It's not a very busy road, but cars pass by, anyways. Amen. So today, we are going to be looking at the book of Esther. The book of Esther. Amen. The book of Esther is where we are going to be looking at. I am going to read the book of Esther from where we are reading today. And then, we are going to discuss as... It's our custom. We will discuss. We will discuss various verses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to begin to read from verse ten. The you know, Let's open up our Bible to the Book of Esther, chapter one, verse ten. Esther is the next book after the book of Nehemiah. We are over with Nehemiah. Before Nehemiah, we were studying the book of Ezra. And now, in Esther chapter 1, verse 10, I'm going to actually read from verse 10 downwards. And as the Spirit of God stops us, wherever He stops us, and that's where we're going to end. In verse 10, the Bible says, On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was married with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bista, Habona, Bigga, and Abadga, Zeta, and Kakas. These are people's names. The seven eunuchs who served in the presence of King Ahasuerus to bring Queen Vashti before the king with a royal crown in order to show the peoples and the princes her beauty, for she was lovely to look at. The king wanted people to see a beautiful thing. In verse 12, but Queen Vesta refused to come at the king's command delivered by the Enoch. And at this, the king became enraged and his anger bond, his anger bond with him, excuse me, it's not anger, anger. His anger bond within him. Then the king said to the wise men who knew the times, for this was the king's procedure towards all who were best in law and judgment. Praise the Lord. Verse 12. Verse 12, Esther chapter 1. Verse 12. Amen. But when Vesta refused to come at the king's command, delivered by the union, at, at, at this the king became enraged and his anger born within him. Verse 13. Amen. Then the king said to the wise men who knew the times, for this was the king's procedure towards all who were versed in law and judgment. The men next to him, being Kashena, Sheta, Admata, Tashish, Meres, Masena, and Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, 
who saw the king's face and sat first in the kingdom. These are the kind of his associates. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is verse 14. And then we go to the 15th verse. The Bible says, according to the law, what is to be done to Queen Vashti because she has the she has not performed the command of King Ahasuerus delivered by the eunuch. In the 16th verse, then Memuka said in the presence of the king and the officials, not only against the king, has Queen Vashti done wrong, but also against all the officials and all the people who are in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. That is verse 16. When we look at the 17th verse, the Bible says, For the queen's behavior will be made known to all women, causing them to overlook, to look at their husband with contempt, since they will say, King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, and she did not come. Praise the Lord. This very day, the whole the noble men, the noble women of Persia and Media who have heard of Queen's behavior will say the same to all, all, all the same to all the king's officials, and there will be content with and wrath in plenty. I've just read verse 18. And the 19th verse, the Bible says, If it please the king, let a royal order go out for him, and let it be written among the laws of the patients and the meese, so that it may not be repealed, that Vashti is never again to come before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal position to another, who is better than she. This is verse 19. And two more verses, and we'll be done with chapter 1. Let's look at verse 21. Verse 20, 21, and 22. The Bible says, So when the decree made by the king is proclaimed throughout all his kingdom, for it is vast, all women will give honor to their husband, high and low alike. This advice pleased the king and the princes, and the king did that as Memucan proposed. The last verse, verse 22. He sent letters to all the royal provinces, to every province in its own speech, and to every people in its own language, that every man be master in his own household and speak according to the language of his people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's a wonderful Bible reading. So let us begin to look at these scriptures we have read. Remember, we have just read the book of Esther, chapter 1 from verse 10 to the last verse I guess verse 22 what do we learn amen what lessons do we gather from what we have just read I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will help us to open up as we begin to look at these scriptures in the mighty name of Jesus amen in the mighty name of Jesus now let's Go to the if you from verses 10 to 12, 10 to 12, that is 10, 11, and 12. Says this that is the that's the king, king of Bashir, told his seven Enochs or Chamberlains to bring in Vashti, but she refused. Vashti or Vashti was the queen. The king invited his wife or whoever that lady is, but she is the queen. Come, I want to, I'm proud of you. You are beautiful. Come, let me show you to my folks. Let me show you off. The woman, you know, just ignore the man. Just snubbed him. This annoyed the king. It annoyed Jesus. And then in verse 13 to 14, the two verses, wise men who knew the times, wise men who knew the times, you know, people who studied the times, Listed in verse 14, we are the ones who knew the law well. Their names were mentioned in verse 14. Let's go back to Esther chapter 1, verse 14. Amen. The men next to him being Kashena, Shelta, Admata, Tashish, Meres, Masena, and Memukan. 
The Bible says they are the seven princes of Persia and Media who saw the king's face and sat first in the kingdom. So they were the ones that noticed that, you know, this snobbish attitude of Prince Vesti has enraged the king. Now, in verse 15, the Bible says, He asked what should be done unto the queen according to the law. In other words, these seven princes of Persia, I guess that's what the Bible calls them. It says, seven princes of Persia and Media. They know the law. So the king said, what should I do to a woman, a queen, who has decided to ignore me, who just disgraced me in front of these guys? Hallelujah. It's just like going to the law. The, the law is written. That is the law. So every punishment for every offense is in the law. Some people, because they don't know the law, they take the laws into their hands. Others know the law, so they know what to do, how to go about it, what to do. In order to get somebody to do what? To be, you know, just to, to, to pass judgment, to judge, to indict somebody, you know, a, a, a lawbreaker to, to give him the proper judgment. Now, what we are saying, when he asked all these men who knew the law, what shall we do? The men did not waste time to give her, give him the answer. So one of them, we read from verses 16 to 20, 16 to 24 verses. His name is Memukan. Memukan amplified this offense, in other words, he made it bigger. You know, this what this lady did is so unbelievable. It's, you know, it's, un, it's, it's highly unacceptable. He he magnified it, and he suggested that she be deposed, depose, deposer, or disposition. This man said, "This queen for doing this is not worth being a queen anymore." So that other noble women. By doing so, that will become an example, example, you know, it will be an example to other women of the empire and all the women. Not to follow Vashti's example and despise their husbands. You can all see that in verse 17. Let's, let's go and read verse 17. Esther chapter 1 verse 17. For the queen's behavior will be made known to all women, causing them to look at their husband with contempt, since they will say, King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, and she did not come. So, they, they just did not want that to, you know, take place. So that other women will not, you know, base their activities or their rude behavior to their husband. They just wanted to nip it in the board. They don't want to wipe out that act by Vashti, so that nobody can lay hold on it. No other woman can lay hold on it and despise their husband. So, what happened next? Let's go to the Bible again. In verses 21 to 22, the last two verses of chapter 1, this idea pleased the king and his nobles. You know, when these seven princes of Persia told the king that that woman should be deposed, the king was happy. He got the response and he was happy about it. So an edict or a law was sent throughout the empire in various languages. Um, that's what we are reading. That's, that's the summary of verses 21 to 22. Stating that every man should be ruler over his own household. Is it not the... I mean, this man is just speaking the word of God. Every man should be ruler over his household. He didn't say every woman. Um, we're not going to go into all that. The word of God is settled forever in heaven. I don't care whether they legislate it or whether they reason it out or whether they begin movements about it. The word of God has said the, what the word of God has said. Amen. This bit of information relayed by a vast communication system help set, set the stage for the rise of Esther. So, you know, 
The Bible says he's the one that put it one that and, and, and you know enthrones the other. Amen. The heart of kings are in the hand of God, like 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 a river he, he toss toss tosses them around wheresoever he listed. Amen. God is in the business of promoting his people. One scripture says promotion cometh not from the west, nor from the east, nor from the north, from the south. Do you know that that scripture did not mention the north? In other words, promotion comes from the north. Amen. And it is from the north that the Lord did. I'm not talking about geographical north. Hallelujah. The north side. God is on the throne on the north side. Amen. So that is the end of our study today. That incidence, you know, snobby attitude, you know, disregard to Zeus's order provoked the king who sought counsel among the wisest men in those days who later, you know, gave him a, a prescription according to the law. And that prescription according to the law was passed so that this behavior will never you know, occur anymore in that land. Amen. You know, it's interesting that nowadays the laws have changed. You know, secular laws, canal laws, health laws, all kinds of laws. Everywhere there's always a law. If you go to transportation, there's just in the United States, I'm just taking one country, there's transportation code, if you go to banking code, there's, there's so many laws, there's laws on health, information privacy, privacy acts, there's all kinds of laws. The laws keep changing to suit human beings, to suit you know, gender, to suit political offices, to suit individual preferences. Amen. But the law of God does not change. Hallelujah! Amen. The word of God is settled forever in heaven. We are going to pray as we close. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ again, we thank you because you are awesome. Hallelujah. The Bible says that I will sing unto the Lord who is worthy to be praised. We don't have more time to sing, but we are worshiping him. So shall I be what? Save from my enemies. Enemies are not just human beings. Demons are our enemies. Satan is our enemy. All those unfavorable conditions, circumstances, poverty, sickness, all those nonsense situations are our enemies. And we are thanking God, we are praising Him because He has delivered us from the power of the power and from noise and pestilence. In Jesus' name. Thank you. As I meet you again, in another edition of Samuel, Saul, and David, their ministries and the kingship. My name is Reverend David Sinekoko. May the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.